Okay. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Oh, you put fingers. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Ify. I'm Michael Michael. You're not meant to say your, your full name. Yeah, that's my name. No, people can track you down on the internet. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ify. I'm Michael. And today we're going to tell you about how we got nines in maths and how you can get a nine in maths too. So obviously we've done our GCSEs and mm -hmm. we're going to try and give you tips and tricks that worked for us when we were doing our GCSE maths. This is mostly for people who are doing the new spec. I don't think the old spec actually exists anymore. No. So this is for everyone from obviously this year's year 11s and below. So I hope you find this video useful and that you enjoy the video. Tip number one is practice. If you want to be a good mathematician, you have to practice whatever level of maths you are and whatever field you go into mm -hmm. from primary school right up to post-grad level. You're going to need to practice. Like, that's one of the only ways you can ever get better at maths. Practice makes perfect, of course. And like, if you're really smart at maths, naturally gifted, but you don't practice, you're not really going to get anywhere especially as you progress on to A-level maths and perhaps degree level at maths. So practice is probably the most important. Obviously for me, starting year 12, um, I do further maths and I have quite a big further maths class. I think I have 25 people in my class doing further maths and across the year group, we have about 50 further mathematicians. And even at that point, most of the people in my class have got nines for maths, but even now they're finding it difficult. And I feel like the thing that really gets us through um, the syllabus at the moment is just by practicing and practicing is probably the most important tip I can give you in this video because if you don't practice then you're not going to get any better at the skills that you want to learn and want to master. Now we're going to move on to tip number two and we're going to talk about how we can make Eurovision more effective and make it more enjoyable as well. So one way I chose to revise was through looking through a lot of the resources that we got in class uh, which was like worksheets, which was like revision sheets. Um, and a way that I my, uh, like to revise as well is when I made um, a formula sheet out of all the formulas we needed to know for the GCSE spec. So that was like, I know there are a few textbooks that have the formula sheets at the back of the textbook, but I would handwrite them out because I felt like handwriting them out and then making my own sheet was a more effective way to help me learn and remember them. Well, what I did was, if we have this book here, it was similar to this book. It looks quite the same, but it was just all about grade nine questions because if you want to get the grade nine in math, you're going to have to get the um, the questions at the back of the paper correct is because those are those tend to be the hardest questions. And it's very important that you get them correct because they are worth a lot more marks as well. So I just practice the harder questions as well as past papers to enhance my knowledge so I was more comfortable with the trickier things. Now we move on to our third point which is past papers. So past papers is just another form of revision, it's like kind of a subset I would say and it's probably one of the, another one of the most important things that you have to do because it's great because there's so much content out there online which you could find on the AQA website or the Edexcel website whichever example you're doing and practice questions is it's just a lot more realistic. It's not made by the teachers that make their own things. It's just, it's made by the actual exam boards and you're going to get similar style questions, not the similar questions themselves, but similar style questions. So if you get more comfortable with the style, then you're going to be more comfortable when you're doing your exam. Yeah. And I think that the way I did my past papers, when I actually started doing past papers was, um, I started doing past papers open book. So what I mean by that is I started doing past papers. It wasn't timed. Um, I just had my book, my maths book open and I did the questions. If I did the question, uh, without the book, then I'd make a mark saying I could do it without the book. But if I got to a question and I didn't know the formula for it, um, I would then look up, up in my textbook or in my class book. And then afterwards, I would mark the question saying I needed to look at this formula. So after you finish the past paper, you can mark it. And I really do suggest you mark it yourself and not the teacher, because when you mark it yourself, you'll be able mm -hmm. to make the corrections yourself. And 
I could also make a note of the formulas I didn't remember. So when it actually came to revising like a bit closer to the exam, I revised the formulas I didn't remember in my past papers more than the ones I just knew off by heart anyway. So like a massive example of that is that I never, like I never remembered the formula for compound interest. And I know that sounds really dumb, but like, I just, dumb. I just never, Things like cosine rule, I just always remembered. Mm. With... Tip number four is going to be about resources you can use uh, when you're doing your revision. So like uh, we've already shown in the video, um, we use the GCSE uh, mathematics more. textbook, which was, I use it. This one's a grade nine targeted one. And I use this one like mm. quite a bit because I wanted to get a grade nine. Right. And I guess that's what I'll probably recommend this one specifically for getting a grade nine mm. in this video. But I didn't start with this one. I started with that start one. With this one. Start, start easy and then work your way up. Yeah. Um, this one is just like the workbook for the general GCSE course. Um, and this isn't example specific either. Like obviously this one's for, like specifically for Excel, but this one's that one's just grade one to nine maths workbook. And it's and it's subjects it's topic specific as well. So it means that you can go to a specific topic if you don't understand it and do the questions from there. Because I know for me there was a lot of topics that I just didn't need to do the questions for. Mm, like exactly. all of trigonometry, I was pretty confident in, I, and like algebra, mm. I didn't make mostly for like statistical stuff but that's just because i don't like statistics but. and and it helps is because you don't want to be doing you know questions regarding topics that you know so well is because you feel like you're just wasting your time that's what i felt i felt like i was wasting my time is because i'm like i already know these questions and it it decreases your motivation so doing the topics that you're weaker at is very helpful is because you could just go straight to it and then you you improve on that more so the fifth point is motivation and uh, motivation is quite a hard thing to sustain is because motivation comes and goes sometimes sometimes really motivated sometimes you just really can't be bothered uh so my tactics to be motivated for a sustained for a sustained period of time and pretty much forever i guess is just to look at your future self and then see what your future self would be saying to you I know it's quite cliche, but it actually does really work is because uh, your future self is going to be a lot smarter. He's going to have a lot more responsibilities and he's just going to be doing, he or she is just going to be doing so much bigger things at the end of the day is because GCSEs is just only one step. It's a building block to your whole future. So you don't want to fail now. Otherwise, it's just going to block your future from just thriving in your future okay i this is gonna sound really bad but like for me a lot of my motivation was just to please my parents <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like especially if you're like if you have like those typical you know those typical asian yeah, and fresh, african parents yeah. like i feel like they were that that was a massive point of motivation for me because they're just like oh uh, your sister got like a billion a stars like we expect you to do the same like, obviously, I was self-motivated to do well because I want to do, like, academia and go to higher education. And that's what I want to make as a career. But I feel like, actually, my pet, like, the pressure from my mm. parents is actually a really good motivation for me to say, like, to say the least, actually. But I think as well, if maybe if you don't have those, like, those crazy Asian or African parents mm. that just want you to do well all the time. Um, I think that another point of motivation for me is, like, really just like do i actually like would i be doing myself justice if i wasn't putting mm. the practice and the effort in because i think that a lot of people like i know from experience a lot of people on results they look at some of their results and they're like oh like i didn't expect this kind of grade like maybe you were expecting an eight or a seven in maths and you get like a six and you're like oh mm. and like you know like you know yourself and you know that like if you didn't put the effort in You'll be thinking on results day like, right, I could have just done like an extra 30 minutes of revision a week to get a higher grade. It's about suffering in the present. <clears throat> it's about suffering in the present for the future. Yeah. And I think that you have to be willing to give up that time mm. to like, you know, know that like, okay, this is something that's only going to last like, let's be real, GCSEs last two to three years. There are some subjects which you're never going to do to do again. Yeah. Like for A-level now, I do maths, further maths, physics and economics. English, bye-bye. English, bye. I do one of those minus further maths. Exactly. Like, he does the same subjects minus further maths. But I was like, after GCCs, I was like, English, bye. 
history by Bye. the drama. But, but, yeah, but where's of course, drama? <laughs> of course, you still care about them. It's because it just. I mean, I was I was motivated just because I just wanted to to look nice. Also, to please my family, that was a big one. And one of the one of my biggest things was mot being motivated by your friends. So, for example, if he, you could. So I saw him working all the time. It's because he's got a lot more larger work ethic than I would than I do. I would say because I'm not. I would say I'm fairly lazy, but you see your friends doing all that work, and they're all suffering. They're all suffering to do better in their GCSEs. And that just really motivates you because it's like, you could do that as well. So I think it would be a good idea to just surround yourself with the right people. Is because the people you surround yourself with, like they alternate your mentality and your thinking processes when, when you're going into the exams and preparing for these exams. So another thing would be m surround yourself with the right people and then that in turn will just motivate you. Anyway, that's our short guide on how you can get a 9 in maths. I hope this was helpful for each and every one of you Year 11s and below out there. Um, if you like this video, we're going to be making some more videos about GCSE success mm -hmm. um, and how you can actually better your grades, get the 9s or the A stars you want in different subjects. So if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more content and obviously comment down below on any questions that you may have for me. Mm -hmm and for Michael, yep. and we'll just see you all later. Good luck with your vision, everyone. Now we're gonna move <laughs> I just can't help, but I just keep on thinking the government is looking out through this camera. Oh, if we Which is about your revision, and how- <laughs> Tip number four. Erectile dysfunction. Shut the f- <laughs>